let's get things going. Um, I am Joyce Johnson, author, speaker, sales champion coach, and founder of Y Sales Network. Welcome to our Pivot During Panic webinar series. Tonight's topic, purpose over profit. As I've mentioned in the past, we put together these uh, webinar series to lead up to our Y Sales Leadership Retreat so that we could actually begin to have dialogue with you, um, talk about resources and tools and do some networking and all the things that we need to be successful in 2020. I mentioned earlier this week, I got a lot of um, texts and things about people getting on a bus and going into 2021. And I'm like, no, we still got to hang in here to 2020. So we still have goals to meet for 2020. We still have things we want to accomplish. And so we're gonna provide you some really great tools, some information, insight, resources to help you still be successful in 2020 because we can't fast forward it. We have to now take our time and prepare for the new norm. So tonight's guest is Evan Stewart. Evan is a well-renowned um, life and business strategist He's a, a master in building businesses. Um, he has been successful in building seven and eight figure businesses in the past. He um, also provides coaching and development to different businesses, professional athletes, political, um, uh, um, what do we call the political people these days? Our politicians, <laughs> our, um, to our politicians and um, different individuals around the world. So it's really a pleasure to have Evan. I actually thought of the purpose um, over profit. I didn't think of it, but I wanted to bring it and present it to you guys because Evan sent it out on one of his Monday morning motivations and it spoke to me. It was positive. It was powerful. It was what we needed at this time. So without further ado, Evan Stewart. Oh, Wonderful. founder of Assessed Academy. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you for having me again, Joyce. I, I appreciate yes. it. And uh, I think, you know, they, these, these conversations are so important right now to have because, um, you know, what you're talking about is, is what you and I have discussed, you know, privately and then on a couple of other, uh, a couple of other mediums in regards to right now, there's so much tension, uh, professional tension, people, we yes. you know unemployment rates are skyrocketing and people are trying to find their next move. But really, uh, this whole dialogue stems from at least a belief that I have, which is that you deserve to be inspired, fascinated, and motivated by where you live, where you work, how you live and work, and who you live and work with. And right. so I'm excited to dive into this conversation with you because I do believe you're a person that lives that life. And it sounds really existential and almost untouchable for so many people, but it's possible, isn't it? <laughs> In fact, it's it tangible. It is possible. You it just is. Gotta, you just got to claim it and, and go to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I'm excited to be here this evening. I really am uh, thankful that you're allowing us to continue this discussion and bring value back to, to your great audience. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. I tell you, Evan, um, why don't you get started? T tell, share why you um, put that post out that day. What were you thinking? Mm. What motivated you and said, you know what, today I need to talk to people about living their purpose. Mm. Mm. Well, the, the, the short nugget of it is that so many people aren't talking about this. <laughs> it's, it's that uh, the measurements that we typically go by is the ROI. So what is the return on my investment when I spend this much of time, energy, and resources doing something. But you touched on something in my bio, which is interesting, which was the uh, the experience I've had professionally in building and scaling companies. Yes. And the reason why this is important is because that was the catalyst for even this conversation, which is uh, those of you that have had an opportunity for us to engage before, you might have heard that the big part of my story was as a young individual. I, I didn't go out. I didn't party. I didn't holiday. I didn't do anything except work. And so uh, I've been able to, by the grace of God, build some, some pretty important things in business at, without being 50 or 60 years old and uh, getting it done at a young age. But the interesting thing was on the outside, so many people would see you know, a, a multi eight figure book of business. They'd see you know, a, a multi million dollar salary. They'd see the, the life that's structured. And on the other side of that, what they didn't see was stress, and anxiousness and waking up every day with a little bit less in the tank than the day before and still finding some type of energy to come home and justify to my friends and my family 
that I'm working for them when in reality, <laughs> I was really working almost for myself, for my own ego, for my own needs, because I wasn't present and I wasn't seeing and hearing and paying attention and knowing deeply the people that were important in my life. So the reason why I believe purpose over profit and the catalyst for that post among all others and even this conversation is because I had, I, I made it, I got there. And my definition of making it really for me, it was being able to make strong financial decisions that don't have much of an impact. So like, do you buy which fancy brand of automobile, right? Do you want the Rolls Royce, the Aston Martin or the Porsche and having that be as, as an emotionless transaction as do you want like ketchup or mustard? Which one do you, I mean, I mean, and I know it sounds really almost ridiculous, but I reached a point where I recognized like I'm trying to fill my life with things. And what I recognized was I was in a position where I was just siphoning away all the things that were important in the name of progress. And it was my progress and it was only mine. It wasn't spiritual progress, relational progress. Um, So purpose over profit really was that I lived the life that everybody said to live and I worked and I went after the deals and I, I built the income, but I was so poor. The only thing I had was cash. And I believe that while money is important, I believe personal development goes out the window when bills come in the door. Like you can be the best Joyce, but if you come home to a stack of pink slips, there's going to be some distraction. I do believe it's important, but it's going to be a distraction. You're right. It's a distraction. But, But the other side of it is if you can wake up every day without this being some daisies and roses, idealistic world, if you can wake up every day inspired and ignited to move that day in your work and come home fulfilled, I believe everything else follows. So we're chasing the right, say ROI, we're chasing the wrong thing at the beginning, which is the return on the dollar instead of, okay, let's look at ourself and our spirit and our relationships and start really getting a union with that calling, a union with our purpose and live in alignment to what is considered to be a gifting or why you were created to be here and, and the revenue and the impact, all of that follows. And, and that narrative to answer your question, long run around a short walk, that narrative, Joyce, is why... <laughs> why I sent out that email and, and uh, it's ignited great conversations like this one. I would have to use that long run of a short walk, but you know, <laughs> it, it's, you know, they talk a lot for a couple of years and not doing it right now um, in corporate about work-life balance. Right. Mm. And work-life balance is a very difficult thing to obtain when you're making it happen. Right. When you're, and you're being successful at it because I heard someone say, um, when you're being successful at it, your biggest competitor is yourself and what you need to do to tweak and change to make that same thing happen next year and the following year and the following year, right? So as to your point, when you say, well, we're doing this for family and we want to be able to take family on vacations and do this with family, well, we're so consumed with getting to that next step and that next step and the next step that we're not doing those things that we set out to do. Right. Well, and you touched on something that I'd like to unpack for a minute because I think it's extremely applicable, which is that concept of balance. Because we've all heard that before, work-life balance. And typically what we think is that work 50 and then I'm going to go life 50 and then it's a good life. And that's not actually what work-life balance is. See, I believe that burnout stems from a prolonged misalignment between your gifting and potential and your daily activity. And I believe that when people are calling for balance, what they're really calling for is a need to stop living a life that they know deep down. There's guilt and there's sometimes shame and there's some, all of those negative feelings, stress and anxiousness. When I hear work-life balance, what I hear is I want to stop living the life I've defaulted to in name of sacrifice for those I care about to start being present in the way that they most need me. And that's what I hear in balance because, again, going back to my qualifiers, uh, qualifiers, if you're inspired, fascinated, and motivated by your work, then you don't need as much balance. You can work very hard and you don't feel guilty when you come back home. Now, I'm not saying that not being present, like if you're sitting in an office and you're not present, I mean, that sometimes is a real physical right. balance of needing to be home, but so much of it stems from needing to just hating going to work, hating what you do, and then trying to put on a smiling face and telling your children they can be the best that they can be. And every time you speak it, there's a little part of you that knows deep down that you aren't. 
and you haven't <laughs> taken the steps to get there. And I know I'm kind of touching on maybe some things that are a little bit deeper here, but that's what oh. I think balance really stems from, you know? Yes. And, you know, when, and when you spend that time, you know, with family, you get that feel good time. And that's kind of like what you need to refuel yourself so that you can go back to work. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that now that people are having an opportunity to actually be at home with their kids and work from home with their kids and get those little hugs during the day and, and things like that. I, I really, so I business wise, mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to go back, right. There's going to be a new norm, but I think mm -hmm. that there is also going to be a big shift in how people prioritize their work. Yes to get to that work-life balance that they've talked about for so many years until we just threw it out of the window in corporate and we just started saying, you know what, there is no work-life balance. You got to do what you're going to do at hundred percent. And then you got to go back and do life hundred mm -hmm. percent. Right. Like that whole, yes. back, they went back to the mentality, work hard, play hard. Yes. Yeah. And they did. Everybody took a one. And I remember that because it got very, hard on one side of, oh, you just need to love all everything about your life. And then it was, well, screw the life. You make the money. And, and we see these pivots. Typically, it's generational pivots as people that come to a certain age want more for their life. And then they're just going to work, work, work. And then those that have already been through there. And it's just this back and forth and back and forth. But what I love about what you just spoke about is our conversation, like this conversation, and the participants that are watching this, those that watch the recording, those that actually come to your full-blown event and see these deeper conversations, Joyce, this is what begins that change. And there's a saying that I love that if, if you're watching this and you're, and, and when I say your business, by the way, I'm talking about you and your professional life. I'm not talking about you as the CEO. You, you might work for someone, you might be self-employed. I'm, I'm just speaking in general, your professional life. I work with a lot of business owners, so that's kind of my default language. But just to clear that, that's what I'm talking about here, if you're watching this and, and maybe you don't own a business. But your business, your professional life is built to serve your life. Your life is not built to serve your business. And so many of us work so hard to become slaves to a, to a certain job. And this is not a, oh, you're just a cog in the wheel. No, no, I'm talking about where your life cannot continue unless you spend time, energy, and resources in your work. And even worse, in a way that drains you in the five areas that make a person spiritual, financial, relational, professional, um, and personal. And so when you recognize that your professional life is actually there to serve the rest of your life, and you were not put on this earth just to work in a cubicle and then die without people knowing you're significant, no. um, that, that really starts to change your perspective. And my qualifier that I use is I, I believe that every single day needs to move the needle in those five areas. So if you're looking at work-life balance and you're watching this and maybe you're taking notes, I encourage you to write that down. You've got a personal, which is who you are. Personal is just how I feel. So personal, Evan, I do things like before this, I was working very early. I've had a lot of days to work. So it took about an hour, just kind of worked around in some music and did some fun visual stuff for our conference and did some things that weren't work, work per se, but still kind of ignited me and, and filled me. You know, working out at the gym, personal is, is what that means, financial. Where do you earn your income? Do you enjoy earning your income? Are you feeling fulfilled in how you earn your income and more so how it's being distributed, right? If you know how money moves, you know how to control it. But also, you know, if you get a gift of finances, where it moves from there. <laughs> My uncle said always uh, paying taxes is a privilege, paying more than your fair share is stupidity, but other privileges like, you know, charity and helping others. And now's a great time. There's a Absolutely. lot of different opportunities to pour. You've got your personal, financial, spiritual. Doesn't necessarily mean a specific faith. If you happen to not share a specific faith, it's just headspace and your yeah. confidence and your peace. Uh, if you have a specific faith, time in that faith, time in the Word, time in your in your your place of worship and with those people. Um, your professional—that's what we're talking about. How you actually spend your time, energy, and resources and earning money. Uh, what you do as a professional. Um, you've got your financial. You've got your personal. You've got your professional. Your spiritual. And then your relational, which are the people that are important in your life, a spouse, friends. Um, so I, I say those five areas because if I can end every week significantly touching those areas at least once during that week, that means that even if everything went haywire, even if COVID hit and crazy political divides deepen and all this craziness, even if all that happens, I know 
that my life as a whole still takes steps forward. And if you're watching this and you're trying to find that balance, balance can begin in the momentum of things getting back in check. And frankly, that's what helped me start to move out of that imbalance that we discussed you know, at the beginning of, of the webinar. So you're saying that every week you need to spend a little time and the professional, which we probably spend the most time, <laughs> sure, the sure. personal, thinking about our financial, um, our spiritual, and then the relationships, spend time with our family. Right. And that's intentional and time. Intentional time. Be intentional yes. about that. Yes. Yes. Not so just, like, oh, happen to run into the family. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and the, the biggest thing there is the intention. Um, not just being present, but, but presence is a mind, body, spirit. It's not a you physically being in the room. And so when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about if it's, it's deeply intentionally working on, and when I say move the needle, I'm talking about even in a micro way that that area of your life takes a step forward. So when you're with your spouse, be with your spouse. When you're with your children, leave the phone away. When you're at work, be at work. And then if your job actually has a stopping point, like give yourself a stopping point. Because if you're a top producer, like deep in your heart, you love producing, there will never be a stopping point. I have so, <laughs> if I stop this right now, I could go and work until I was absolutely yeah. red. You know, I'm, I know you could too. <laughs> I had to get to the point, Evan, where I just, at like six o'clock or, you know, what have you, because I had customers on the West Coast, customers on the mm -hmm. East Coast. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you know, and I, one time I just made it at six o'clock, I stop mm -hmm. and I go sit on the sofa or whatever and just let my brain relax. And I may go back three hours later and do my, you know, my to-do list and my follow-up for today and look at all the other emails that came in. But I just got to the point where I said, Joyce, you got to start giving yourself that time, um, that, that stopping point. So I made that six o'clock, you know, granted I was on conference calls at 7 a.m. with the East Coast, sure. but um, so I wanted to give the West Coast an extra hour because I'm a Central Standard Time folks. So I just said six o'clock, I'm going to pause, not stop working, but pause for a little bit and um and then go back to it a little later mm -hmm. well for those that are actually you know inspired fascinated motivated like you are which is I, I, like we talked about i know you are because you said pause not stop those people that live those <laughs> lives they stop they stop when they're dead like you're you're never going to stop maybe you slow down a little bit but but you're never going to stop and and the the other component to that which i know you felt this choice because all all people who are, are top producers have um and again, my definition of top producer is just you're achieving the best of what you're going at. I know people that are top producers and they do ministry work and they earn a, a penny when other people earn a dollar and they live life to the fullest. And so the other thing that you're going to fight with if you're watching this and you're wherever you're at in your journey, maybe you're here, is guilt. Deep, deep guilt. Like Joy sitting on the couch, you know in the back of your mind the phone could be used right now and so you have to fight yes. and, and i don't want to speak for you but i know for me personally i felt that and if you're watching this there's a chance that you could fight guilt when you give yourself space especially when you're trying to go out of momentum give yourself two phrases my friend rocky garza mentioned this it changed my life a few years ago it's grace and space grace and grace, space grace and space we've got grace give yourself the grace to just be and figure it out and the space to bounce around a little bit and kind of figure it out while you're there. Because when you can allow yourself grace and space and recognize that those moments of, on the seventh day, Jesus rested. I mean, come on, we got to take a breath, right? On the, when, yes. when, you're, when you're working, you have to give yourself a moment of breath. My friend uh, uh, who was a, an early mentor in my real estate career is Brian Buffini and his company had talked about um, if you never have a day off, you never have a day on, which is kind of a fun, like coachy phrase, but that is true. <laughs> and allow yourself the grace and the space not to feel the guilt when you know deep down you've just got to take a day, right. take it. Because yeah. I've been, I remember a couple of years back, I worked almost the entire year, 14 to 18 hour days, depending my, my, my slow day. If it was a 12 hour day, it was like, where did all this time come from? Yeah. Um, that's no way to live your life. It's There's just no not. You know, and so 
and and so a part of that purpose piece is making sure that you touch all five of those points right yes and um because a lot of times people think oh well, i'm living my purpose i'm you know i'm um i'm feeding the homeless right and i'm still working you know 20 hours a day feeding the homeless and going here and going there like you said no matter what you're doing mm -hmm. you got to pause and go and do something else and so a lot of people think that the purpose has to be something magical where um you know we're all here for a reason and you know and to to give and to support and love but some people think that they have to if they're just if they're working their regular job that they're in they're not living their purpose and i hope you don't understand that's not really the case it's if you're only working your job and not doing these other things you talked about would you yes. agree with that i i so would i mean at the end of the day the world being changed does not happen because you've got one or two amazing people that just do sweeping massive moves i mean does that happen yes yeah. you've got it in business you've got you've got it in in, in micro i mean mother Teresa wasn't exactly a billionaire but created amazing change nelson mandela created amazing i mean you've got amazing world changers yes, yes but the momentum is carried in the minutia of the everyday and really it starts in at home and in, in your environment and then it moves out to your work and then your, to your community and and the purpose piece is not I am working in this cubicle, therefore I'm not living in my purpose. Because sometimes what happens is people mistake emotion with purpose. Where I get excited by art, therefore I must be an artist. Maybe not. Maybe, Maybe it's not. a part of Maybe it's your hobby. <laughs> Maybe it's your hobby. See, see, I, I love being creative. And what, what I recognized, Joyce, was like for me, I had that pull and I thought I'm gonna be a musician and I'm gonna do all this. No, no, not necessarily. I was able to take that emotion and bring it back into the work of what do what specific this question this challenge if you're thinking that i challenge you to ask not why we never ask why it puts people in a defensive posture including yourself we ask what what specifically about that emotion what specifically about that doubt the oh i'm not living in my purpose what specifically are you trying to to accomplish what specifically draws you away from your job what specifically doesn't fulfill you about your work like get to the root of it because more often than not our life actually lines up in many ways with with purpose it's just we think that we always need to be at the forefront of leading this massive movement and sometimes in reality the massive movement is planting seeds in your community and your relationship and over a millennia those eventually grow and that can be hard to accept for some people. It's hard to accept for me sometimes where I want things to be moving in a greater capacity. But um, at the end of the day, if you want to first prosper where you're planted, you have to take root where you're placed. And we always want to get up and move and get up and move and get up and move. The first question and challenge I would ask is if you feel that you're maybe not living in your purpose, the question what specifically about your current life doesn't line up with where you believe your calling is. Um, have you even identified your call? I mean, we're going deep, much deeper here into the reality of, you know, yes. is it, is it, is that an emotion? It's because something gets you excited or is that a deep seated spiritual belief, a derivative of divine truth that you were created for one sole purpose and it's out of alignment with where you're spending your time. I mean, this, if you want to get into the deep seated faction, it, it's much, much, much deeper conversation. Uh, absolutely. And I, and I like what you said, you know, take root, where you are you know because sometimes you know where you are in a workspace so um i can recall going to a family member's um, funeral um an older cousin cousin coretta and and being her funeral and just being full and, and crying because when all of the people that worked with her said how she had impacted changed their lives and how she fed into them and supported them and how the you know it, just how she made people feel and better about their lives and inspired them and things you begin to think wow I, you, you know and who i didn't know that right mm -hmm. i i didn't know that about her and it also made me think that like you said what am i doing where i am yes. am i touching people's lives am i mentoring am i feeding into people am i taking root as you said am i planting seeds and helping others and sometimes 
um, this thing that you think you're supposed to do is if, if you're a musician or what have you, maybe it's just supposed to be your hobby. Maybe you're really doing your best work where you are. And you have to ask yourself that. And I think that's a lot of times why in corporate we do these 360 um, reviews where you're asking people what they think about you, how you handle things and things. And that feedback that you get sometimes is overwhelming because you're just thinking, wow, people think this greatly of me, right? Mm -hmm. People are inspired by me. And so I don't, um, I, I just love what you said, take root where you are sometimes and really process that because if you do leave and shift and go somewhere else, there may be a community of people that need you where you are. And if you yes. need to shift, fine, shift, but then make sure you take those same, um, those same gifts with you and, and feed into people in the next place. But let's, let's talk about the, um, the tactical because you, know, you and I are having a really in, engaging discussion around these concepts, but I know, I know you, Joyce, and how in, in your mentality of your coaching and your training, how important it is for you to give people tactical. And so I think if you're watching this and you're listening to this and you're thinking, okay, great, I'll stay here, but, but now what? Um, let, let's break it down and, and give you a couple of quick action steps because I was literally having this conversation in a similar capacity with somebody earlier today, this afternoon. And uh, I'd love to bring this to light because so many of us, when we think of purpose, we think of purpose, right? I mean, the big, the big deal, the big, I mean, yes. it's just like way up there. I and, Mother Teresa. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And okay, it's great to get connected with an end goal. My, I mean, I speak, my end goal is, is large. I know yours is. I mean, it's great to get connected to that. But let's rewind back to right now. Um, you need to take a step first and the best way to cut through emotional thoughts, which that is an emotional thought is with logic, like a hot butter thing. And so what I encourage you to do is if you think, let's, let's say hypothetically you're watching this and you think a part of you maybe needs to shift. There's an individual that I was speaking to earlier that really doesn't like his job. He wants to be elsewhere, but he, part of his job wants to be in another industry and he's just ready to quit every day. I'm just quitting. Today's the day. You know, I don't like my boss. I don't like my job. Screw everybody. I'm out of here. I mean, he is ready to quit. But here's the thing. So we go, okay, that's great. Got these great goals. Let's rewind. Before you do that, you just have to consistently make $500 in this other area. That's it. The goal is not to quit yet. It's just to start the drip. Because we hear this burn the ships and we typically burn the ships in expectation of the after. But the after takes years, you know, in the bio that as when you introduced me so, so kindly, you, you touched on some of the things I did in business. I was on a podcast last week or two weeks ago and uh, the host asked just how did you do, you know, build a, 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 that type of a business in your, in your 20s? The answer was simple. Do nothing but work every day for seven years straight on one thing. I don't care if you're an athlete, if you go to the gym every single day eat right, have a trainer, and only focus on your physical well-being, you will be beautiful, even more beautiful at the end of those seven years. But it's the same thing as you move into the purpose. So we're starting with the what question, not the why question. What specifically about my work does not align with where I believe I need to be placed? Okay, great. Second question, where specifically do I believe I need to end up? Don't even get me started on the spiritual walk here. I'm just talking agnostically, black and white. Where specifically do I believe right. I can end up? And then what specifically about that, about that goal, about that place, about that vision, about that purpose, what is one tiny, the low-hanging fruit, one tiny little thing I can take now? So you're working as an accountant. You really don't like numbers, but gosh, you're just so smart and you're really systematic. But deep down, you know that you're also really great at talking with people and guiding people through moments of harm. And you think maybe you need to move into therapy. Okay, so you don't quit and then open up a therapy practice. No, no, no. What you do is you start that low hanging fruit. How do we start to bring in the purpose to your day to day? So now maybe after work, you go out of your way to find people who need your counsel and your guidance. And so over the next 90 days, you start to build a rhythm of listening to people and seeing how they need to be heard and walk with them. 
And in that rhythm, you start to build up momentum with individuals. And now your pe people are reaching out to you specifically when they have hardship and referring you just as a listening ear to other people who have hardship. And as you go through your licensing process, now half a year later, you finally get that license and you can start getting paying customers. And now when that next person calls, you say, you know what, I'd love to counsel you on this because I just got my license as a therapist. And frankly, I'd love to be able to help you. It's going to cost $150 to move forward. Is that okay? And they say yes. And you start that slow drip. And I know that's frankly not very sexy, but as far as sustainable transitions, if that's, if you really truly believe that there's a part that needs to transition, see, we plucked the low hanging fruit. We brought it into our life. I don't have right. to build up this. I'm going to impact thousands of people and have franchises that help men and women through this and through this. No, no, no. It's just, I'm just going to start by listening. And, and that's how you can transition. If you're listening to this and you feel that you're stuck, um, then that's how you transition. Or if you feel like you're in purpose and you don't know where to go, same concept. It's the low hanging fruit of the next level that you're looking at. You know, instead of impacting a hundred people, how do we get to 150? How do we get to 500? You know, that type of thing. It can, it can be applied across any level, but that's where I would begin. Absolutely. You know, it's like, how do I, you know, increase that? How do I double this? And I like the fact that you mentioned getting into a rhythm, you know, said old in 90 days, right? Or it said it takes mm -hmm. 90 days to create a habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you need to do it over and over and over again for 90 days? And I can share that um, at the end of last year, I said I wanted to do tips and provide people, re you know, information and insight about cells. And so I said, okay, I'm going to record a sales tip every day for 90 days. Mm -hmm. And I recorded every day. Well, every weekday, every weekday for 90 days. And I posted a sales tip. I went live on a sales tip. I recorded a sales tip. And that's really what it takes to be able to get there. Yes. And I said, I'm going to create this content. If I'm going to create this content, then I have to go about doing this every day for 90 days. Mm -hmm. It's just a that's long obedience happened. in the same direction. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just like we had, we had touched on in, in my business, I just did the same thing one focus for seven years like that, that that that's it it's just it's not complicated it's not because i'm gifted it's not because i'm smart it's not it's, it's not because you know anybody has really any extra special i mean every once in a while you get someone who's just a mathematical genius and they invent this thing right. but in reality the people that we typically look up to are individuals who just simply focus on one thing didn't get distracted. I'm not going to invest in Bitcoin. I'm not going to build a real estate portfolio. I'm not going to do, I'm going to focus on one thing for a long period of time. And that's the, that's the thing. People don't typically gravitate when we talk about purpose. Purpose takes time. Purpose takes, it takes time. It takes time. And if you say, you know what, Joyce, I tell you what, you can live a life you're going to love and it's going to take you, it's going to cost you this much money, this much time, this many relationships and take probably 10 to 12 years. How does that sound? You're going to say, no, that sucks. Like yeah. uh, that's the reality of it. But, but if you think about it again, what we touched on grace and space, you're a moment in the journey. But now if we have an awareness of where to actually start moving towards, not just a want and a desire, wanting it is half the battle. No, it's not. Wanting it is none of the battle. Wanting it is thinking, wanting it isn't doing. And if you start plucking that low hanging fruit and moving it into your life, you start to build momentum. See, obedience is hard when we don't want to live that life. Archelius says we rise to the level, uh, uh, excuse me, we don't rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our habits. So what you're doing by plucking that low-hanging fruit and building that obedience of kind of lining up with that calling, that purpose and testing the waters is you're building a habit that when you're tired and you're complacent and you lean back in your life, it still pushes you forward at a momentum that will move the needle when you know, over a period of time. That, that's awesome, Evan. Um, I know oh, someone put something in chat. They said, yes, I agree. I can be all over the place when something isn't seeming to, work, um, to be working. However, I may have missed a piece of it, but yeah, someone totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it says, however, my history has proven if I stay on the course, what I want will come. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Felicia. Um, and 
you know, one of the things that I, and one of the talks that I do is how to reinvent yourself. Mm. And, you know, one of the things I, two of the things that I say is one, be still. You know, just, just be still and listen in and, you know, into the universe and what it's telling you. And then secondly, um, I tell people, you know, that who I ask them, who are you in your best daydream? Right? And your best daydream ever, because we all sit around and daydream and someone said, where, where are you? Where do you go? Right? Who are you in your best daydream? when you're happy and you're, you know, skipping along and, you know, whatever it is you're doing, where you are, who you're with, you know, what is taking place in your best daydream? Mm -hmm. And because I feel like that is your internal spirit speaking to you mm -hmm. when you're daydreaming. Mm -hmm. I think it's, Absolutely. you know, it's, yeah, it's kind of a conversation with your soul when you're daydreaming. And I, um, you know, because you're, you now you're awake, you're, you're cautious but you're seeing yourself somewhere else doing something else. Mm -hmm. So I ask people, you know, be still, take, take it all, you know, take it all in, but then ask yourself, where are you in your best daydream? And maybe that's where your purpose is, you know, is leading you to figure Ooh. out why you're not happy where you are. Yes. And, and you actually, you gave me a thought that I think is, is key. This, um, revolutionized revolutionized i do this actually every single quarter it, it builds off I, I swear joyce we've known each other in a different life but it builds off what you're talking about um it's very simple you can do it tonight yes. after the happy hour um it's called an ideal versus reality list it's just this simple five areas personal financial spiritual relational yeah. professional we've touched on you just write them down boom 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 exactly who are you in your best daydream in those five areas ideal it's a it's a t-chart write it out i'm kind of old school I like longhand whatever if you want to do an ipad i won't know but write it out um, and then it's the ideal okay so literally ideal so ideal you know you're working out every day you're eating right you're spending time with the wife and with their husband with the kids with the partner with the whoever you're going to church you're you're doing all of these things this is the ideal financially i'm earning this much money this is how i'm earning it this is how i'm spending it this is what i have this is what i don't this is my charity i mean deep and then you go to the other side and you write reality. Now, this is not a discouraging thing. Some people are saying, I just got so sad. Or I said, no, 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 this isn't. And you may, thing. you may get sad. And that's okay. And that's okay. It's so okay. <laughs> you, you write it out and you just say, okay, so this is ideal. Yeah. Daydream. Now, what's the reality? And so if you're looking for that low-hanging fruit that we had discussed, just start to find where there's disconnect. Okay, if there's disconnect, what specifically is disconnected? Remember, I never ask why. And if there's connection, what specifically uh, is creating the connection? So maybe you think you've got your finances that lined up. When I did my ideal versus reality, my finances were kind of the only thing that lined up. So just so you know, one thing lining up doesn't mean that everything else is good, but, but it was what specifically about that lined up. So I liked the income that I was earning at the time. I didn't like how I was earning it. So even in that alignment, there was misalignment, if that makes sense. But as you go through that list, now you can say, okay, we talked about moving the needle in those areas every week. Well, now I know, okay, part of my relational misalignment is I don't feel like I'm present with my wife. Therefore, next week we will have scheduled date nights and we will make sure that when I'm with her, my phone is off, clients calling or not, so you're still moving the needle. So see that now what happens is you start to, you stop walking and living in the gap of ambiguity and you start touching the areas of your life that actually need your fingerprints and they're, they're longing for you to come back into that area. So like Joyce said, who are you in your, in your best daydream? Well, sometimes if you're a more logical thinker like me, you gotta get it all out. Sometimes that type of an ideal versus reality practice can actually be really beneficial and helpful for you as you're going along that journey. And then write it out, you know, put it, I, you know, people tell you to come to my house. I have these big white post-its on the boards, you know, on the walls everywhere. They're surrounding a place right now. And um, so if I'm thinking I need to think something out, they're there. If I got action items, something I need to execute on, they're there, um, you know, and what is that? I just glimpsed and something said exercise. Well, I haven't, I haven't checked off on that one. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was like 30 calls a day doing my blog, my podcast. Oh, got to write another book, social media, you know, mm -hmm. the sponsors, you know, to be able to LinkedIn is all there to be able to check on to. But, um, you know, I like that you gave everyone those five areas to think about. Hopefully everyone wrote that down, the personal, the professional, the financial, the spiritual, and uh, the relationships and relationships and making sure that you touch all those because they also, um, especially in the relationships, they need to touch you, right? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you think people need you, but really you need the people once mm -hmm. you get there, right? Once oh, you take absolutely. that time. Absolutely. I would be nowhere without an amazing supportive wife um who's yeah. the ceo of our company now like i'm not even the ceo of my own company anymore i mean she's an outstanding business she's uh, in business she's amazing um you know away from the office and uh, you know i've got great friends that one of my my very best friend i've actually known since since middle school and we've gone through so much life together um so yeah i mean you know anybody who says that you know i don't need anybody I, really that's a mass career they've gotten hurt in some form or fashion they're saying i don't need to get hurt again therefore i'm going to shun out people in my life uh that's a sign of weakness not a sign of strength and if if that's a uh, vernacular that you typically incorporate i'm not calling you out i'm just let's bring a recognition to that together um, it's impossible to build a life that is sustainable and significant if you're the only one doing it mark zuckerberg is an amazing man yeah but he didn't build facebook the thousands of people that work at Facebook built Facebook. Absolutely. See, Mark Zuckerberg is in a name that's elated because of the platform of amazing men and women under him that created that dream of reality, that type of thing. And if you watch the movie from the very beginning, he wasn't um, by himself, right? Right. From the very beginning, he had his friend who was a businessman, and then he met the guy um, from NASPER, is that what it is, the old mm -hmm. music, you know, from the beginning. Um, it wasn't himself. Matter of fact, it wasn't even his idea. It was the two brothers' idea that they went to pay him to do it. That's right. So, <laughs> That's right. So That's right. You, right. So if you watch the movie and you're only as, you know, I say all the time, the president's only as good as his cabinet, right? Mm -hmm. You're yeah. only going to be as strong as, and as great as the people that you surround yourself with mm -hmm. um, to help you. No one can accomplish great things on their own. Right. It, it just doesn't. Bill Gates, he had his buddy, Steve, that was brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's always a partnership somewhere, maybe a solid partnership, but there's always a partnership. And that's mm -hmm. why I love collaborations um, for the Why Sales Leadership Retreat that's coming up. I'm, um, I'm working with um, National Association of Women Sales Professionals. I also have someone speaking who's a part of Sisters in Sales. You know, we got stuff published um, in 30 days. Mm -hmm. You obsess, you know, it, it just takes a village. I know that's an old saying, but it takes a it village. It takes a village, let's say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to build a business. It takes a village to become a well-rounded, truly successful individual. It does. I mean, it takes a village to do anything significant, period. I mean, that's anything it. Anything significant, Raising period. That's right. It. Raising a business, raising a child. I mean, whatever you want to take out and plug in to make it applicable to you, it just, it, it really does. And so if you're thinking, okay, maybe I'm starting something or, or maybe I'm not starting something. I, I can't partner like uh, Bill and Steve. I, I, I don't, I don't have that type of relationship. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be an equal partnership. Sometimes it no. can be a union growth, you know, just find a mentor or a coach or someone out there, you know, like, like Joyce, uh, someone who you can reach out to and, and build a relationship with that can help guide you along those, those steps. Um, but, but it always takes good people. And that goes back to even what we're talking about, about moving in purpose, uh, people that can keep you accountable to your purpose as well, you know, because it's easy to get distracted. It really is. It is. Well, Evan, thank you so much. I want to allow, um, go to the chat here and allow mm -hmm. folks to, to um, ask a question. I, I think I want to ask them first, what's the one takeaway? Um, they'll have from this discussion that we've had tonight. So if you guys would go in the chat and just put, you know, what's one takeaway that you're going to end the call with and you're going to, you know, put some thought behind it. And then if there's any questions um, you guys like to ask Evan, then also put that in chat. But just like to ask you guys on the call, 
what's the takeaway? We're talking about purpose over profit. And we're not saying you don't need money, you know, but money is a tool to help us accomplish the things that we really want to do. Absolutely. Darren says, how does Evan keep great hair like that while seven I years saw working? That. That's one of the miracles, Darren. <laughs> one of the miracles of that time. I don't know how I got married. I don't know how I good photography and and I don't know. I mean, that was an act of God is what that was. So. <laughs> you know, Darren, he probably was still going by the barber, right? Yeah, I, I probably, go. Yes. I would go once, uh, actually, even still, I haven't because of COVID. So that's why I wear hats a lot right now, because things are a little nuts. But um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, my hair grows so fast to go about once a week, once or twice a week. So yeah, it's crazy. So Kaylee said, enjoy the work and the people you're around. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's that's great. Yeah, you, you're right. And, and Kaylee is a, a student getting ready to graduate from college. So mm -hmm. I'm happy that he's on here today and listening to this conversation, um, as Thank I said, you. early in, in life, you know, sometimes, you know, we still as young people, we gotta go out and just figure it out ourselves. And, you know, every generation knows more than the generation before them, right? It, it, well, that is true, but you can learn. Uh, Akili, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. I wanna talk to you specifically for a second. And anyone else is watching this as young, um, I'm 26. I turned 27 in September you are never too young to get started. Okay, my, my, my last company broke 25 million in sales when I was 25 years old. And when I exited last year, it was 35 uh, annual book of business. Now I don't say that to be braggadocious. I say that to be very clear. You do not have to be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 before you do something significant. That is a lie. It just takes a lot of work. You can't do much else, right? My life didn't really go anywhere from 18 until, 2025, but I want to speak to you specifically that this time, I don't know your life situation, but many individuals don't have as nearly as many commitments. Um, maybe you, uh, you have, don't necessarily have a family or it's a small family or whatever the life looks like. If you're in your 20s right now, this is an amazing time to put forth a lot of effort because realistically, everyone's going to say you're too young. Mm -hmm. until you start to do something significant and then your age becomes a reason people want to work with you. I used to be so ashamed of my age. That's why I grew my beard. It's because I looked older. <laughs> but, but in reality, I, I love that you're here and that you're engaging with Joyce and her content and you're diving into these things because it is, not, it is totally possible to build something not just significant but astounding at, an, at a young age. It doesn't mean it's going to happen immediately. Still took seven years of really hard work and years and years before that of other work and mentorship and, and going at it for a long time, but it is totally, totally possible. So just to speak to you specifically, thank you for being here, first of all, um, but don't ever let anybody plant a seed of doubt in your mind that because you're a young individual, you cannot achieve something significant. It does not mean that it has to take half your life to get there. That, it, it really And doesn't. to Phil also, Phil, my intern, who's managing the call who we were on together with initially, Phil is, will also be graduating um, this year from college. Mm. so for for both of so you guys ditto <laughs> yes so ditto to to phil as as well so they will both both of those young men will be graduating um from college this year so and he said and Achilles said thank you for the words of encouragement you're welcome yes and i know that um wait a minute darren had said something else let me find it I, it was something around the time it takes to build. Uh, I, I, know, I, need, I need to put my glasses on. Oh, he, what his takeaway was, the time it takes to be successful um, was his key takeaway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seven to 10 years sometimes. And that's true. My key is it typically takes whatever I sit down and whatever I analyze for the work, I, I always estimate it's going to take three times as long and be three times as expensive. That's just what it is. So definitely three times as expensive. Definitely. Sometimes <laughs> definitely it's more. Definitely three times oh as God. expensive. Yeah, God forbid you start doing anything like what Joyce and I are doing with conferences <laughs> and stuff. Whew, that gets expensive real quick. But um, yeah. no, it, it, does, it does take so much time. It does. But, um, you know, I love the phrase by, by my mentor, Tim Story. And he says, I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not who I used to be. And I think that's a oh. beautiful statement because in that season of growth and wilderness it can be so discouraging but 
if you just look back, and I have a hard time with this, so this is a practice I even, I really struggle with, um, but just looking back and, and just taking a minute to recognize that walk over the last 12 to 24 months, um, that can be extremely encouraging to see where you were at and, and where you're headed right now. And I know we're going over a little time because we got started late, but I'm gonna move it on. But I do wanna say again to the college students as well, because I've said this to them, what Evan just said, you have to acknowledge where you are. You're not where you were before. You've accomplished something. You've accomplished being able to be consistent in college, going to class, getting your education, getting your studies done, and being, becoming well-rounded individuals while you're adulting. And what you're doing, many cannot do. Many have not accomplished. So while, you know, it, you, know you have to be grateful in the moment, um, for where you are and what you've been able to accomplish. Yeah. So I, that's it on that. <laughs> but they've heard it before. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I didn't even finish school, so they already got a leg up on me there. So. <laughs> they've heard it before. It, you know, it just, whatever you do, it takes a discipline. And, and college helps them, you know, learn that discipline. I think college teaches that discipline and that, that um, way that gives you that accomplishment as you're going through it, because now you don't have your parents taking you to a class and saying, Mr. So-and-so, can you give my child another chance? No, it's not it, you can't do it, Yeah. right? You have to work, you have to pay bills, you have to understand different things. So, um, you know, again, you know, great accomplishments to these young men and looking forward to them um, graduating this year. So we're, um, we're gonna close that part of it out. There's just a couple of things that I wanna um, go over with you guys. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. I say thank you every week to the Bahamas. We were initially supposed to um, have the Y Sales Leadership Retreat on the beautiful Bimini Island in the Bahamas, and we've had to um, check and adjust, I would say, and maybe some people may say pivot or whatever, and move to a virtual platform, and they have sent me lots of goodies. So, Evan, you will be receiving some of these goodies. Um, they um, sent these goodies out for people that were um, participating on the panel for the um, Pivot Doing Panic webinar series. Um, so they sent shirts and hats and, you know, you see eyeglasses and things like that. One also um, thanks some other sponsors that have come aboard as our presenting sponsor, um, National Association of Women's Sales Professionals. I found that organization just online looking for, um, you know, sales, what I do. And um, Cynthia Barnes, who is the lead, leader founder of that organization, has really been a blessing in my life. She's really taken over and mentored me and been there. And I, I appreciate her truly for everything that she's adding to this event. Um, um, we are gonna have our man cave now since they're opening things up a little bit. We're gonna go live um, from Lucho Houston, which is a men clothing tailor shop. And um, the gentleman, um, Hector, um, who owns it, he's all, he used to be a newscaster. He used to be like the weatherman. <laughs> and um, he also owns his own tequila and, and, obviously, and cigars. And so the guys are going to get together there and have their man cave and then broadcast out virtually to the other men who sign up for the retreat. And then, um, you know, um, Larry Brooks over at um, Texas Real Estate, he, um, well, Brooks and Davis Real Estate, I should say, he calls himself Texas Real Estate King. Um, he's given us shirts for the men, for the man cave from his Pure Hustle brand, uh, which is really awesome. So the men, we, I've been wanting to put something special for the guys because they said, oh, it's a retreat, it's just for the women. No, men, we finalized it. We have something special for you. Your man cave is going to be in full effect. The men are going to have opportunity to get together and talk amongst themselves about, you know, what they're experiencing during this time as business owners, husbands and fathers, and the people that we need to lean on um, to keep us going. So um, just wanted, like I said, to thank this couple of people that came on. And I, I always get a lot of great support for Self Publishing 30 Days. Everyone knows that Darren Palmer is my guy, and um, he's really been helping us along with this platform as well. Go to the next slide, Phil. Next week, we're gonna have um, Organizing um, Chaos. Um, and it, I think I initially had um, 
organizing mayhem was it and i said monica i need a different um, subject for this but monica is just a mastermind at organizing things and finding tools and resources and i think while we're all at home and i don't like clutter and at one time my office desk because i have this my office desk is actually a table it's a dinner table that i saw at a furniture store and i wanted it so that just goes to say it's a really oversized table and it was so much on it and i i don't like clutter and um so but also just organizing your work and things that you need to do to simplify um your life she's going to give us some tools some resources she has another young lady that's going to join her but i feel that this i think we're going to be working from home a little longer than we thought and then i think some companies are actually just going to start having employees work from home so i think it's important that we actually get organized um, from our kitchen tables and things like that and create some workspaces and find out how best to go about organizing our our work life the next one phil so again i talked about why sales leadership retreat um, and you know our virtual learning conference now and that's going to be june 25th and 26th and uh, we have a lot of great things planned actually at the end of this week over the weekend we're going to put up all of our breakout sections and we have a uh, we're um have one more thing that we're planning that we just need to confirm and that's our um, comedy hour so we're going to have a comedy happy hour called don't wine drink wine <laughs> so again since we can go live somewhere we're going to go live from a place in houston and then we're going to um, go out virtual to all the people who attend the conference and have a really good time. We have a great comedian. Um, we've told him what we want the topic to be and he's already creating some things. Um, he's local here in Houston, so he's gonna show up at a place with us and go live. And um, we're gonna have a really great time. Phil, go to um, our next slide. I'm gonna wrap it up. So our speakers, you know, on this platform, I wanted to bring our speakers in to give people a little snapshot into who they are and the value that they bring and why they were selected for this platform of why sales leadership retreat when i thought about the theme hashtag 2020 reinvention and what it takes to do just that and i wrote all, all the subjects that i wanted the um, topics i wanted to be able to talk about then i put the people match the people up with it so the people that are part of this platform are here for a reason they're here to guide you and to help you and provide you with resources like evan did tonight um, he's going to be talking about the art of letting go because we all know until we let go of the old stuff it's going to be very hard to move forward successfully with the new so thank you again evan for tonight You're next slide welcome. So um, I want you guys to go out tonight and get registered for the event. The event um, is $119 for the two days. Again, we're going to have um, three breakout sections that you'll be able to attend at 10 and 2. We're going to have our friends from the Bahamas do a panel on doing business with the Bahamas. So for those of you who are interested in maybe doing some business with Bahamas, having your own retreat there, or conference, doing a family reunion, whatever it is, they're going to talk to you about how you can work with their organization then um in addition to that like i said we're going to have the man cave we're going to have the comedy hour um we are going to our great friends at national association of women sales professionals is going to give everyone for your 119 dollars they're going to give everyone a one-year membership that's worth 150 dollars or valued i should say 150 dollars but you get so much more they have so many great webinars and educational content on their site for um, their members we are going to send you a wine glass a notebook um, you're going to get a little wine bag to carry your wine in that's the table and an event t-shirt because we want you we're creating an experience and although we couldn't go to the bahamas this year we're going next year but since we couldn't go to the Bahamas this year, we want you to still feel like you're having an experience. So we're going to send you out a bag of goodies. We'll, um, you know, and even more, we're still working on more things, um, giveaways for you guys. And um, just want to say, go ahead and get registered tonight. You know, claim your seat. Although we're not going to have seats, claim your seat. <laughs> go to our website. 
at www.ysalesnetwork.com. You can find us on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. Um, Eventbrite. Eventbrite has the, the link for you to register. We're doing it through Eventbrite. But um, Facebook, YouTube, uh, you can always follow me at I am Joyce Johnson as well on any of the social networks. So I feel go to next one. I think that's our last slide for the evening. Oh, yeah, purchase today. Go ahead and get signed up. We don't want you to wait till the last minute and then, the, you know, you want to go and see Evan again and then Evan's um, section is all booked and you can't see Evan. He's going to do two. But, you know, you want to make sure that you get registered so that you could, um, you know, sign up for the sections that you're most interested in right away. But again, thank you guys for joining us this evening. Thank you, Evan, Phil, everyone that joined the call. Again, I am Joyce Johnson, author, speaker, sales champion, coach, and founder of Y Sales Network. We look forward to seeing you at the Y Sales Leadership Retreat. Make it a great night.